Hello everyone, Tavi Ginario here from EliGuitarist.com. Welcome to this new tutorial. Today's tutorial is a collaboration between EliGuitarist.com and Guitar Salon International in Santa Monica. First of all, I would like to extend a word of thanks to our friends at GSI, Guitar Salon International, for allowing me to use a wonderful guitar for today's tutorial. I think it is a perfect guitar for this piece, for Tango on Sky. It is a 2010 Jose Luis Gil, uh, a spruce top, and I think this is a Brazilian or a CSA Rosewood. Um, a gorgeous guitar with um, a great response and volume, and I, I am pushing the guitar hard and it does not disintegrate. Uh, the sound is just very robust and um, I did not feel held back by this guitar in any way and today is the first time I'm playing it. So again, thanks to our friends at Guitar Salon International for their partnership, uh, both by providing this guitar and partnership of vision. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And today's tutorial is for Tango and Sky by Roland Dienz. This is perhaps one of the most recognizable pieces in the classical guitar repertoire. Um, I had the chance and the great privilege to actually play for Roland Dienz a couple of years ago, about a year before his passing, as he was touring and traveling through Southern California. And I have some of my fondest memories um, in terms of guitar experience just by spending a little bit of time with him and getting a little glimpse into his mind as a composer, a performer, and I think in a very general way, being just blessed by, by his gentle spirit. Um, when he passed away, uh, the guitar community, and not only the guitar community, but the music world uh, at large, experienced a tremendous loss. Uh, I remember playing for him and um, he came wearing a pink sweatshirt to the master class. And after all these years, um, I'm thinking nobody can rock a pink shirt like Roland Dienz used to. So it's a, it's a great honor for me to play this piece and I hope um, that uh, by, by promoting uh, this tutorial and passing it on to you, uh, his memory as a composer and as a human being will continue to live on um, through his music. Uh, so this is Tango on Sky. It's an interesting name. Tango is uh, the Argentinian musical form. And then the word sky, he translated as fake or counterfeit uh, leather. It's something that's spurious, that's not genuine, but it's flashy and shiny. And so I think the piece really um, lives up uh, to its name. Uh, the piece has a lot of ostentatious runs and uh, a lot of flamboyant techniques. Um, I think Roland Dienz concentrated virtually every guitar technique into this one piece. It is a part of the advanced repertoire level. The piece is fairly short and it's uh, somewhat repetitive, but because of the difficulty involved in performing this piece at a regular tempo, uh, I put it in the advanced repertoire section. Uh, without any further uh, delay, let's get straight to work and start with the first segment of this tutorial. If you're watching this video on any of our social media platforms, uh, head over to EliteGuitarist.com and check out the rest of the tutorial. Uh, the first uh, section uh, includes bars 1 through 6. And as I said before, Roland Dienz seems to have included every technique known to guitarists in this one piece. Bars 1 and 2 begin with uh, a series of harmonics. These harmonics are natural harmonics played at the 12th fret, and it's an alternation of the A and E note. That's the 5th and the 6th string. Um, in the sheet music, um, you could play those with a uh, fourth finger, or I prefer to use my third finger. It seems to be just a little bit more steady, a little bit more secure. So the alternation of these harmonics begin like this. <laughs> to play this a little bit more slowly, uh, I think we need to have some sort of a metronome sound. So I'm going to tap my foot to, so that uh, you get a very clear sense of how the pulse of the song goes 
and where the harmonics fit in terms of that pulse, in terms of that beat. So if this is our tempo, one, two, three, four. Now I'm tapping the eighth note and I think as you practice this piece rather than having the quarter notes serve as your, as your metronome beat, uh, try to have the eighth, uh, the, the eighth note be your metronomic beat. I think it will give you a clear sense of the pulse. So these are the eighth notes. One, two, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. piece begins. Uh, if you look at the phrasing for the first two bars, you have this crescendo towards the end of the first bar and the beginning of bar number two and then a decrescendo. The way you could make that crescendo is by starting the piece with a dolce sound and then moving towards the ponticello. The ponticello will give you a little bit more tension on the string and so you could dig in a little bit uh, harder with, with your thumb on that string. So let's try that again, bars one and two. Three and four and okay so those were bars number one and two the last note of bar number two is no longer a harmonic but it's an actual natural six open string and that is the uh, the the clue that we're going to move into the melody proper of the piece. So let's begin with the piece at bar number three. Uh, the first chord is an A minor and that A minor is a suspension. It's a six to five suspension from F to E. So I'm playing A, C and E. A with the third finger, C with the first finger and then open first string. Um, I actually I'm grabbing the full A minor chord because I'm just used to grabbing a full A minor chord and I'm playing that F natural with a partial bar chord. So A, C, F, followed by E, A, C, and then A, C, E, followed by E, A, C. So it's really an A minor chord, but we're plucking the first three strings first, followed by the second, third, and fourth, played simultaneously, Again, back to the first three strings with the right hand, and then uh, the strings number two, three, and four played simultaneously. And notice that for the first grouping of notes, I'm using I, M, A. For the second grouping of notes, for the second chord, which is that A minor chord, I'm using P, I, M. So, bar number three. And then we have this chromatic run um, starting with beat number three of bar three and it is open E, F natural, F sharp, G, G sharp and then open A. Now there are multiple ways in which you could play this one. You could play it as a slide where you op play the open string, do a slide hammer on on F a glissando from F to G sharp and then articulate open fifth string. I kind of like actually articulating each note with a hammer on. I think it creates more of an Argentinian tango. And even though it is a little bit slower than a full glissando, I think it adds more of an authentic feel to it. And I may need to start that run a little bit before the beat a little bit earlier in order to land right on the beat with the A. So here is our eighth note again. So that A note on the fifth string has to fall right on the beat. Let's try it again. Okay, 
after I, I land on that A open uh, string, we have in the melody a set of triplets, but it's um, combined with an eighth note in the secondary voice, in the bottom voice. So, uh, the top voice goes like this. But now I also have to include an eighth note on the bottom voice. So, so let's try it again, bar number three. Okay, so the last beat of bar number three is a G note. It's still the same A minor chord played with a second, third, and first fingers, but the G note is played with a fourth finger. So A with G on the top, then a G flat, and the G flat is played with a fourth finger on the first string, second fret. So low E on the fourth string played with the second finger, and back to A. C, F is that A minor suspended chord suspension 6 to 5. Uh, what do I mean by suspension 6 to 5? Uh, the chord is unresolved and we're adding the sixth step of the scale which in A minor is A, B, C, D, E, F and then the resolution to 5 would be a resolution to E which is part of the um, natural um, A minor chord. Alright, so let's take bar number 3 again. Bar number four now, we have, this is a, a B minor with a flat five if you like jazz harmonies with a passing tone there on the third step. So bar number four we have B, A, C sharp, F natural. The B is played with the second finger, third finger for the A, fourth finger for the C sharp, and F natural with finger number one on the first string. So, and then I'm going to resolve that C sharp to a D natural with the fourth finger by moving the fourth finger from the second fret to the third fret. So, okay, in context, last beat of bar number three and beginning of bar number four goes like this. So, So, back to C-sharp and then an accent and that accent is for A, open B, open E. So bar number four again. And notice that that accent is not right on the, on the beat but it's syncopated. So if you were to listen to your eighth note metronome beat. Okay, once again. Okay. Bar number four now, once again. After we play that accent, A, B, E, I'm going to follow with a low open six string, then D and A and the A remains planted from the previous chord. And then I'm going to resolve that to an E7. So this is an E7 suspended. The A is a suspension four to three, which means from the fourth step of the E scale to the third step, which is a G sharp. A to E, bar number four again. A filler chord so E D G sharp played open fourth open six and G sharp play with the first finger on the third string and then doubling up with B D G sharp B 
The B is played with the second finger on the fifth string, second fret, open fourth mm. string, G sharp with the first finger on the third string, and then open second string. So. And then again, we have a, a, a chromatic run to a G. And that chromatic run comes from open E, F sharp, F natural, F sharp, and then G. Um, here, rather than doing something like uh, a glissando, it's clearly spelled out that we need to we need to articulate those with uh, hammer-ons. Um, you could use different fingerings for this one. You could use open, second, third, fourth. I think it lends itself most naturally to play the open E, F natural with one, F sharp with two, and then G with four. And we need that G because that's going to be the beginning note of bar number five, and that G note is supposed to last for a full two beats of number five. So, um, as you practice this, practice slowly. Um, the last thing we want is uneven volume on those notes. So, we want all of those to sound evenly and, and equally. You should be able to hear a little bit of that wood percussiveness as you hit the string with a hammer on. It's not simply touching the string, but actually uh, striking the string with a little bit of velocity and force. Bar number five. Uh, let's review actually bar number four. Bar number five begins with that G. That G note um, is accompanied by a set of triads. Uh, these notes are E natural, B flat, and D natural. E natural play with the first finger on the fourth string, uh, B flat with the second finger on the third string, third fret, and D natural with the third finger on the second string, third fret while the G is being pressed. And notice that I am uh, playing the accompaniment staccato. Uh, this is to mimic uh, the usage of other accompaniment instruments in a tango formation, in a tango band. And the way I uh, make those uh, notes or those triads, those chords staccato, is by plucking them and then replanting my fingers on the same strings immediately with the right hand. So it may take you a little while until you get used to the exact position of those notes. Um, as you play those staccatos, try not to go too far out or away from the guitar because they will just um, cause you not to be able to, to land back on those strings in a timely manner. So G. And then we have a monumental run. It is a diminished chord and it goes something like this. All right, we're gonna have to break this one down fairly slowly. There is a pickup note. So that the A note, the fifth string, comes right on the beat, so eighth note uh, metronome beat. And I'm playing that E, the pickup to that run, with a thumb, and then back to A. Now what I don't want to do is allow that E and A to ring out at the same time. That doesn't sound quite right. So I want to stop that E from ringing throughout that diminished chord arpeggio run. And one way to do that is to come back and mute the A with the thumb after playing it. Or a more effective way is to play the E and then plant the thumbnail on the A string and use the back of your thumb to mute the initial note E. So 
So let's try this again. You may just want to practice that beginning of the phrase. Let's take that phrase now. The first three notes um, are legatos, uh, which means that I'm only articulating the beginning A, and this is the way I finger this, this piece and, and the way I think um, works best for my hands and the way I play the piece. So A, B flat, hammer on with finger number one on the fifth string, first fret, C sharp, played with the fourth finger on the fifth string, then E played with the first finger on the fourth string, um, second fret, and all those four notes, uh, the beginning four notes of the run, are played with the thumb. Then I'm playing an open G string, third string, followed by a B flat, hammer on with the third finger on the third fret. Then followed by a C sharp, played with the second finger on the second string, second fret, and then E played with a, a A finger on the right hand. We're going to focus on the right hand in just a minute, but for now let's just get the left hand. Hammer on, C sharp, E, and this is uh, virtually a diminished chord. Uh, you may have heard that in flamenco music. It's a, it's a beautiful chord, I think it's moody and it's got character. Um, and, and rather than grabbing this chord from the beginning, it's better to just walk it. and allow these notes to actually combine with one another to create this beautiful fabric of, of sounds. And then the next part of the run and then I'm going to follow with A, B flat, C sharp, E. The A is played with the thumb again on the third string and I'm using my first finger on the second fret. Hammer on to B flat, played with the second finger on the third string. C sharp, played on the second string with the first finger on the second fret, and open high E note. So the first part of the run again. Now the last part is G natural played with a third finger on the third string, the 12th fret. This is the octave. So, and as you make that shift, take advantage of the open high E note, which is the open string, uh, that ring will uh, resound. And while that uh, note uh, is ringing out, you could make the shift to the um, 12th fret there on the G. G note on the third string, then B flat played with the second finger on the second string, 11th fret, C sharp played with the first finger on the first string, 9th fret, and then high E note played with the first finger on the first string, 12th fret. So, all right, we're gonna try this entire run now. holding these three fingers um, to form that beautiful fabric of, of individual notes that combine into a chord. Okay, now it's really important to have a standardized way of playing this arpeggio with the right hand. And I think uh, whatever fingering you use, you should settle on one and practice that slowly. Try not to change it once you settle into something that works well for your hand mechanics um, because under a situation of stress or the performance anxiety, 
If you try to make shifts like that, especially with fast passages, uh, it's pretty sure that you're going to, to fall on your noses um, and, and fumble the whole run. So whatever fingering you decide on, practice it slowly and be consistent. I would suggest even perhaps writing the right hand fingering on top of each note of this very long run, ar arpeggio type run. So this is the fingering that I'm using and it works very well. And what I'm doing, I'm relying on uh, an alternation of hammer-ons to give me a break on my right hand and then a natural roll, arpeggio roll, with my right hand that follows the, the pattern P-I-M-A, P-I-M-A. So if I use that, that, that's a very natural arpeggio roll that students learn in the first two months of playing the classical guitar. So again, Notice how in the beginning I could almost have a basic plant position. So open, A, hammer on, B flat, C sharp, E played with a thumb, G played with a I finger, hammer on, B flat, C sharp played with M, and then E played with A. The second part of this run allows the thumb to transition, that open string allows the thumb to transition to the third string and I'm playing A, B flat hammer on, C sharp with I, E with M, then I'm transitioning to the higher position, G sharp, G natural played with P, B flat played with I, C sharp played with M, and then E played with A. So it's a natural roll, P I M. This is a natural roll as well, P I M A. And the final bar of this first segment of the tutorial is a D minor chord. So after this run, playing D and high E play with the fourth finger on the 12th fret of the first string together simultaneously. And it's D and E and then F natural A and D played with the first finger as a partial bar pressing three out of the six strings on the 10th fret. Again so Okay, bar number six again. Here is the metronomic beat. Let's try it again. E, D minor chord, followed by open fifth string, A, and then back to that D minor suspended chord, that uh, tardiness in, in actually resolving the chord, D, F, A, E together, then back to F, A, D, played simultaneously with I, M, A. The, the D note on the fourth string continues to ring out, and I'm playing just F and A, which is the third and the second strings in staccato fashion. So. And as you play those um, final four articulations, a final two beats of the bar, uh, make sure you play a staccato on the accompaniment. So the melody should ring. But the accompaniment should be played in a staccato fashion to create space for that melody to linger. Okay, and that wraps up our first segment of the tutorial. These are bars one through six. I'll see you back uh, to the next section, starting with bar seven.